Hello and welcome to Bro Jewel. We know you missed a classic intro, so it's back again alongside a classic type of video. A collection of immersion mods. Nearly all of today's mods are fairly new, released within the past couple of weeks or months. They also think outside the box to prove that even this many years on, there's still plenty of new ideas for Skyrim mods. Jumping right into things, we have the Bandit Economy. This clever mod makes it so bandits will take advantage of Skyrim's ever-changing economy. When you sell an item to a merchant, there's a chance it'll eventually make its way into the hands of a bandit. So all those hundreds of enchanted items you sold for some quick gold could come back to bite you. Depending on the merchant you sell your items to, there's a chance they'll stow it away to sell to bandits. Fences, as part of the criminal underworld, are willing to sell to anyone, so everything you sell to them could end up being used by a bandit. The mod even breaks it down to individual merchants, so the more noble Seymain Solitude is much less likely to do business with bandits than say Belethor, who'd sell his own sister if he had one. What's great is that the equipment the bandits use will be the actual equipment you sell. If you sell a glass sword of burning and it ends up being stowed away, that specific sword will be used by a single bandit. So the quality and quantity of the items you sell will have an impact. Sell 17 enchanted rings to a fence and those exact 17 rings will eventually find their way onto bandit fingers. Of course, this also means that if you kill those bandits and loot them, you'll get your stuff back, which you can then sell all over again. As the mod page puts it, it's like a recycling system, only bloodier. Also, maybe you should go revisit the merchant you sold it to, and show them just how much you appreciate them selling your powerful equipment to your enemies. To make it so the mod doesn't completely overhaul everything they wear, a bandit has around a 50% chance of equipping a new item and a 25% chance of equipping two. Bosses, however, are much more likely to be using them, which makes sense since you'd expect them to get the lion's share of any new gear. The mod's great for making it feel like your business with merchants is actually having a wider impact on the world of Skyrim. But on top of that, it's great for mixing up the gear bandits use throughout a playthrough. As your loot and forge equipment improves, so will theirs. Overall, this is such a great idea I'm surprised it hasn't been done already. The original idea came from a Reddit post, but the author's gone above and beyond what I initially imagined, so we definitely recommend you give it a go. For today's second mod, we have Destructible Skyrim. This unique mod lets you smash certain objects to pieces and have their physics-enabled debris fly everywhere as a result. Bring out your inner link and smash barrels to get the loot inside or instead go around smashing all of the chairs, tables and bookshelves that you want, in your never-ending rampage of destruction around Skyrim. The mod works surprisingly well, taking advantage of the base game's destruction system without using any scripts. As the famous saying goes, it just works. Simply hitting the right object will smash it, although shouting will also do the trick. As you can imagine, the NPCs around Skyrim won't be too happy if you go around smashing all their furniture, so if you try smashing up an inn or a shop, you can expect the guards to be called. The mod's definitely a lot of fun, but it doesn't come without its issues. It's not fully compatible alongside mods that overhaul the object meshes. And sometimes objects break when you run into them a bit too hard. Which I guess still makes sense since you're fully armoured up, but it's not the most practical thing in game. We're not entirely sure if it has a place in a full playthrough, but we thought it was an interesting proof of concept nonetheless. Maybe the idea of smashing containers and even chests in this way could be an interesting alternative to lockpicks, but we'll have to wait and see. Next up is another creative mod by the name of Daedric Voices. They say the wielders of Daedric artifacts can have their mind corrupted over time. Daedric Voices makes it so whenever you're using an artifact, you hear the voice of its Daedric Prince. When you perform certain actions while using an artifact, there's a chance the Prince will call out to you, commenting on what you just did, or giving words of encouragement. This typically happens when you draw or sheath your weapon, or when you kill an enemy. So as you slay your enemies and absorb their souls with the Mace of Malak Bal, he'll send out his words of praise. Now ain't this a surprise? Pledge your soul to me. Yes. Now, I have a soul in oblivion that needs claiming. Dead. <laughs> oh, I thought I was a goner just now. Thanks for the help. And if you need any supplies, I have a few. Know your place, mortal. Depending on the artifact, there's also some more specific lines, with some being more rare than others. For example, if you feed on a corpse while wearing Namira's ring, you can hear her voice. The same goes for when you block a spell with Spellbreaker, or kill the undead with Dawnbreaker. The default setting puts a 35% chance of hearing a voice when you perform the right action, with an added 7 second cooldown between lines. This makes it so you'll hear your prince maybe once or twice per session of combat, depending on how many enemies you face. If you want to make them more rare, or you'd prefer to have a prince as your own personal cheerleader, you can tweak the mod with some console commands. If you're ready to be manipulated by a Daedric Prince, you can find a link down below. If you like the idea of that mod, you'll probably love talkative dragons. Dragons are known to be fully sentient, intelligent beings. 
but unless they've got a name, they act more like random beasts. Mods have added voiced shouts to dragons in the past, but this takes it a step further, making dragons talk to the Dolvakeen in the midst of combat. What they say will usually be a generic combat on fighting, death, bravery, or their thoughts on the Dragonborn. There's plenty of unique lines, and just like the Daedric Voices mod, it does a good job in adjusting the rate of talking so it won't become too repetitive. I do not fear you, Dovakin. Hiding will not save you. As a nice little touch, if you end up using Dragonrend to force them to land, there's a chance they'll express their disgust at your cheap battle tactics. All in all, the mod is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a great way to liven up those sometimes repetitive dragon battles. And finally, for today's last mod, we have Nordic Way Shrines. These decorative and practical way shrines can be found in each of Skyrim's holds, and at the throat of the world. They can generally be found near the hold's capital, giving you quick access to Skyrim's major towns and cities. The way shrine system is a feature in the Elder Scrolls Online, and if you're not familiar, it basically acts as a way to teleport around Skyrim. To unlock each shrine, you need to visit them with a special key in hand, which you can find through the College of Winterhold questline or by pickpocketing a new NPC. This isn't too handy in the base game, but if you're playing with a fast travel system disabled, then way shrines or other travelling systems become essential. These also offer an aesthetic option we haven't seen before, with other way shrine mods usually going for a Dwemer approach to the shrines. If you're interested in seeing what an immersive non fast travel playthrough might look like, definitely check out our fast travel overhaul video which goes over some great travelling mods. And with that we end today's video. If you're looking for more immersive mods, then check out our other immersion collection videos, or go to our immersion playlist. As always, everything you need can be found down below, be sure to support mod authors in any way possible, and thanks for watching.